I like clean styles. Mozzarella di bufala traditionally comes from the south of Italy. She told him that that was the end of his painting uh, studies and painting career. Terracotta of uh, ceramics and so I chose uh, my favorite color and uh, one of my favorite colors is green. Yuri and this is Alfonso, my two borzois Russian hounds. Very welcome. So I like warm colors. I like as a clothing shows colors in general. Hello, welcome to my home. I'm Daniel. This is Yuri and this is Alfonso, my two Borzois Russian hounds. We are in Villeneuve les Avignon in my house which was built in the 16th century. I have moved here a couple of years ago after leaving India where I used to work for Giorgio Armani uh, Casa, um, working in very modern interiors, very contemporary homes in a 27 million inhabitant city and I needed after five years uh, a bit of calm and a bit of rest so I decided to come to the south of France and move to a fairly small village where I got this renaissance building which was a ruin at the time and which I am doing up step by step, room by room, floor by floor. I've divided it as it's fairly large, I've divided it into a top floor independent apartment and an apartment on the ground at first floor which is a duplex with a little garden which I'll show you afterwards. Um, at the moment we are in the living room, uh, in the Renaissance living room of the first floor, which has a beautiful Renaissance fireplace, an original 17th century flooring, and some furniture that they inherited, some furniture that they bought, and that makes it, I would say, a rather cosy place. It's certainly not minimalist, it's very far from the Armani style I was used to, uh, which I love very much as well, but this is more where I feel at home. Warm woods, um, lots of fabrics, an Italian modern sofa just to lift the atmosphere a little bit and still a lot of work to do. The, the walls have to be finished, the ceilings have to be redecorated as they were at the time, but the dogs don't seem to mind and it's very beautiful in winter to sit in front of the fireplace and um, enjoy, enjoy the weather even when it's cold. I have chosen a decorating style which simply came about naturally it consists of pieces that I have inherited, lots of books that are in all the cabinets so that they are slightly protected from the dust as it's still a building site. There are items I have bought um, like this antique 15th century door which is a very rare piece because of course wooden objects don't survive easily on the outside that long. Uh, there are a couple of modern items like the sofa I got in Italy to make it look less vintage um, as, a, as a household. My personal style has always been one of accumulation I guess. Um, I keep many things. Uh, I got rid of some uh, surplus I had over the years but I like beautiful objects. Um, I am not a minimalist at heart. I like minimalism. Um, I like clean styles but it is difficult to achieve them at home and I, they don't necessarily make me feel very welcome. So I like warm colors, I like as a clothing shows colors in general. In this house the walls and the ceilings are very high, um, they go up to six meters on the last floor and so the decorating choice when it came to finishing the walls has not always been very easy. I think that bare walls can be very pretty um, especially if they're stone uh, but I own quite a few tapestries and paintings that I've collected over the years and some of them I inherited so I decided that they would work and I love the juxtaposition of something very modern, something contemporary like this sofa and an early mannerist painting like the one you see behind me. I think that they work perfectly well as long as the quality of the two matches. So when you have an object, whether antique or modern, that is of high quality, it will always work with another object of another period of the same quality. It's a mixture that sometimes creates trouble, but it can be done, of course. That's regarding, um, regarding let's say, uh, the finishes on the wall. The lighting is very important to me too, because I believe that um, cold lighting uh, especially LED lighting nowadays is very very harsh, very unromantic I find. Perhaps good for reading but um, you know old-fashioned lamps that have worked for for many decades are perfectly fine for that too. So I choose light bulbs that are extremely low, they're 1.5 watts and that gives you a very warm glowing light with very low kelvins and that also helps in the colors um, and for the same reason all my windows don't have modern double glazing they all have what the french call very tiré which means it's hand-blown glass but hand-blown glass used as double glazing so there are two layers of hand-blown glass and that filters the uv light entirely differently to modern light and so what you get inside is a perception of color that is very different to what modern 
clean white light gives you. So what I would like to do, speaking of light, uh, what I would like to do now is to show you my bedroom, which is on the west side of the house, which is getting the afternoon sun right now. And from there, uh, if you want to follow me, we will go down to the little courtyard and prepare you, show you how to prepare a tiny little recipe, very summery, easy to do, um, something that is agreeable to eat in summer anywhere in the world really, but especially here in the south where it's very hot. Come and follow me. Here we are now in my bedroom, I mentioned before, um, on the same first floor. So this bedroom had a collapsed ceiling when I bought it. There were no windows, pigeons were living in it, the fireplace had been stolen. It was in a disastrous state, the, most of the flooring had gone to, so I had to find matching original tomets, which are the hexagonal tiles, uh, terracotta tiles you see on the floor, the fireplace, I had to find something of the right period, of the right size, of the right color. It shook a while and I did find it. We had to recreate windows as they were at the time, again with the antique glassing I mentioned before and the, and the details of original handles and so on. So all of that is a work of passion. Uh, not everyone does it. Uh, I take great pleasure in doing it, although it is expensive and although it's time consuming, but I think the result shows and, and it's a wonderful room to be in in summer because it gets a beautiful light and also in winter because of the fireplace. I am going to paint this room in a very serene light grey um, and there will be curtains which are still missing. There are lots of little details that still need to, need to be done. But living in an old house also means that if you buy a ruin, um, you probably have to get used to the fact that it constantly needs work. And uh, if you buy something that needs to be entirely restored, then you start living in a ruin and you end up living at some point in something beautiful and then you're ready to move on and leave it to the next custodians like I do because I like having new projects. I like giving life back to houses. I like that they are treated the way they deserve. Uh, I don't like things to be kicked out and, and, and modernized um, and then everyone can uh, use their style. But I think that the structure deserves care. And this house has been listed. It's a listed building, one of the 10 listed buildings here in the in town and hence it needs special preservation. On the other hand, um, when you live in an old house, you also need modern conveniences like a bathroom and a kitchen. And at the time there weren't that many of them. So you will see in a minute, I have transformed lateral rooms that used to be corridors and spaces that didn't really have any, any major function and no, no decoration. So there was nothing less lost uh, by redoing them. And I've transformed one of these corridors into my bathroom. As I'm mainly Italian, um, I wanted something that reminded me of Italy. Uh, Southern Italy has a great tradition of terracotta, of uh, ceramics, and so I chose uh, my favorite color, uh, one of my favorite colors is green, and I chose something rather Italian, rather bright, um, to you know, spice it up a little bit. It's not very contemporary, um, but I think it goes very well with the, with the style of the house, and it also shows that you can combine something modern with something more antique, and I'll show it to you in a minute. My grandfather had a good hand for painting. Um, he never went to school, but at the age of 16, um, he was employed by um, someone who was doing a retouchage, so painting over photographs at the time. Photographs, of course, were not color photographs. They were uh, colored by hand and sometimes features that were not um, very nice in a person would just be drawn over. So he loved doing that. And at the age of 17, um, 17 to 18, he painted six paintings, which I all have, three of them are here, um, and three others are in the bathroom as well. Then his mother, my great-grandmother, once he came home, she saw the painting, she found them very nice, uh, but she thought that he was going down the wrong path becoming a painter. So she told him that that was the end of his painting uh, studies and painting career and um, got him another job and, and that's what then became his life passion. But he never painted again. He always painted for us as children. He had a very good hand, you know, did little drawings, but these are the only, the only six paintings. He kept them his entire life. And when, when I inherited them, I was very proud to have them. And I think he has. He was very good for a, basically a child uh, who had never been to school um, and the perspective. I mean, they're not perfect, but they remind me of him. And, and I think they were pretty good for the time.
welcome to my little courtyard, which um, I don't think can be defined as a garden, but um, is a lovely outdoor space in contrast to the indoor living room, which you've seen before in upstairs on the first floor at the fireplace, a more wintry atmosphere. This is my living room, or as the I think Queen Mother used to say, le salon vert, the, the green room outside, where I spend quite a lot of time because it is airy, it's fresh, and it's sufficiently in the shadow to be used in, in, in this season. I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes a very quick dish um, that I prepare frequently for lunch because it's easy to do and it's quick and summer and fresh. But to spend a couple of words on the garden or on the courtyard, I have set it up currently, uh, although the building as you've seen is not finished yet, I've set it up to be able to enjoy a little bit of the outdoor space in summer. The plants are about to grow, they've just been planted in, in spring. On the floor you will see what the French call a calade, which is uh, something used a lot up to the 17th, 18th century. And it's basically a floor made of little round pebbles that come from the Rhone, in this case, from just next door, that make it impossible for women with heels to walk, but that look, you know, very period correct. There is a fountain, which is a newish creation. I think it was made in the 60s or 70s. I will also mention the fact that in the courtyard, there is an assembly of antique stones, which I've gathered over the last two years, I think. And they're going to be used to restore a couple of other walls that are missing in the house. And at the moment, they're just covered by greenery to sort of make it look less like a quarry. Um, this is basil. This is my little court dedicated to greenery and I'm going to take some of it very large leaves because of the Sun and the heat here I'm going to show you in a minute so there we are fresh green to make a nice contrast to what we are going to cut in a minute well as promised we're going to prepare a simple summary dish, really one of the easiest things you can prepare fresh, but with a little twist. We're doing a caprese, but in, instead of using the tomatoes, which of course is the, the traditional option, we do it with peaches. It's the season of the yellow peach here in the south. These come from a village called Boulbon, just next door. I've cut them. They're very nice and have a beautiful perfume. Small, rather firm peaches. As you can see, I've cut them here. I'm going to cut some basil to put on them afterwards. And the basil, which you have just seen, grows here in the courtyard. Now with it comes bufala. The bufala I get is not the one from the supermarket. It comes from Italy. As you can see, it's very milky, swimming in a lot of water. Now let us put the peaches first. It needs about four peaches for two people, five peaches perhaps, according to the size. So peaches first, and on top of the peach goes the mozzarella, which you will see will now explode because it's a very creamy mozzarella di bufala. So there's a lot of milk coming out of it. There we are, soft. Mozzarella comes from the south of Italy. Mozzarella di bufala traditionally comes from the south of Italy, mainly from the region around Naples. That's why it's called mozzarella di bufala campana. And that's where the best one comes from. They make it nowadays a bit everywhere, but it's not quite the same. Then we add the basil on top, little sprinkling of basil. And then what it really needs is simple, simply salt, pepper, olive oil, which is produced here too in the south. And then of course we have some balsamic vinegar and some cream of balsamic vinegar, just to give it a stronger taste. And those of course come from Modena, not quite from the south of France. So pepper first, same here, just to give it a bit of strength to go with them sweetness of the peaches, salt, just a tad really. Then quite a generous sprinkling of olive oil. I put it into this big green bottle because I get olive oil in tins from the producers and friends who create it every year, freshly produce it every year. And so then I put it into this dark green bottle, which my grandmother used just as of, of memory. A little bit of balsamic vinegar, just a tiny little splash. Yep. And then this is a cream of balsamic, which really just needs a couple of drops. And there you have it. Within five minutes, really, you have a plate which is tasteful, perfect for the season, local, zero kilometers, really everything comes from here, except for the mozzarella di bufala, but everything else is, is really local. Fresh to eat and, and the perfect, perfect meal for vegetarians as well.
I have prepared something very easy again for dinner. Uh, in this case, it's a melon and mint soup, which is basically just melon crushed together with mint, a uh, little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and for those who want a little bit of addition on the side. And I'm having it in this tower, which is the original staircase tower of the building, uh, 16th century, 1589 to be precise. Um, and on top of it, it has what the French call a donjon, which uh, one associates with being captive, um, while I um, associate it with beauty because it has eight windows and allows me to see the palace of the popes. It allows me to see the fort uh, of the village, which is called Fort Saint-André, and it has the most beautiful of sunsets. It's extremely romantic, and perhaps one day someone else will be lucky enough to eat with me, but at the moment I'm eating on my own. So um, it's perfectly fine in that case too, because a beautiful place is fine even when you don't have someone to share it with. So, bon appétit! I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my ruin that at the same time is a project and an idea and a paradise for me and um, the south of France welcomes you. Mm -hmm.